So what do you base all of this on? Well, it's almost entirely visual. Clothing, hairstyle, physical bearing, mannerisms, the way you smile or acknowledge someone, as well as any nonverbal communications you're putting out. All of those influence the decision that someone makes about who and what you are. And as we stated, these impressions last for a very long time. The term is called the halo effect, and it colors all future dealings with you, whether good or bad. Hey, how about one more shocker to go along with that one? How you look affects how you think about yourself, too. Even if you don't actively seek yourself out, the average person sees themselves in mirrors and reflections of different kinds, maybe 50 to 60 times each day. And how you look can change your mood and opinion of yourself in very substantial ways. Puppet masking. By now, you're rolling your eyes and saying, yeah, but so what? It's not like I'm going to be online via a webcam on my website. Well, it brings to mind that Dilbert series when he was video conferencing. Of course, you feel that so long as your website is presenting the right image, what you look like isn't important, unless you're physically meeting someone, right? Well, yes and no. Who and what you are includes how you look and how you treat yourself. With eight days to cash, we not only want you to make money on the Internet, we want you to succeed at business. And successful people become successful because they believe in themselves. Part of believing in yourself is making changes to improve yourself and being honest with yourself. So don't hide behind a puppet or a web page. Be the person you want to be for real, and it will show in every aspect of your life, including your website, your business letters and proposals, and your business and marketing plans. Dotting the I's. Now back to the business. So you've picked out a business model and you're all set. Now's a good time to sit down and write out at least a quick business plan that lays out what's going to happen in the next year. So at this point, you're ready to obtain any DBA that's doing business as or state tax IDs as required and set up shop with City Hall. And this is one time when starting out with the right foot is definitely recommended. Although a sole proprietorship can use the owner's social security number as a tax ID, and you can probably run a ClickBank website without any special permits or forms, it's better that you get that in writing from the county clerk than wait to explain it to a tax court several years down the road. There are many excellent resources on starting small businesses, and since we fully expect you to expand and continue your success after completing your 8 Days to Cash program, it's wise to review other business startup documents and ebooks in addition to this one to make sure that you're taking full advantage of everything that's been presented to you. Part of doing things right is knowing what your options are, and only you can fully determine that, since it's you who knows what you're capable of. Pixel Perfect Of course, when someone uses the word image, the first thing into your mind is probably a picture or a photograph, but that translates into online images on your website. So let's spend a few more moments going over some of the things we touched on earlier about Image size optimization for downloading versus the way to ensure that quality is not compromised. Professionals wanted. Sometimes you can save yourself a ton of money by doing things on your own, but there are reasons that you pay surgeons to cut into you, reasons that you have to at least have electrical and plumbing work certified by licensed professionals, and reasons that photographers carry all that equipment and can charge as much as they do for their services. To get professional quality results, means having knowledge of at least a few basic aspects of photography and advertising. And having a quality camera and decent lighting isn't enough if you don't know how to use them or if you don't have a proper setting in which to fully take advantage of their capabilities. The Secrets Revealed As a part-time photographer, I have many of the skills necessary to take my own photos of goods and services that I sell on my sites, and most of them I actually learned in classrooms and through online training. So consider this a little freebie as part of the 8 Days to Cash package. Now there are secrets to taking good photos that anybody can apply, including you. And these secrets will greatly enhance the likelihood of getting good results. So I'm going to share a few of them with you now. First, always use the best equipment that you can find, even if you have to borrow it. Second, use natural sunlight where possible, reflected from a white cloth or a sunscreen. Third, Take shots at, above, and below the f-stop settings and speeds that you think are best. This is called bracketing the exposure. By the way, if you aren't using a camera with f-stop and speed controls, go out and buy or rent one. You're wasting your time otherwise. 
Next, always take at least three shots of every setting and vary the focus on each one so that you can crop if necessary. And if you're using conventional film, have a proof sheet of the negatives made before you have any prints done. That way you can use a magnifier to find just the images you want to print, and that saves you a ton of money. Finally, most print shops can set up digital images for you when the negatives are developed and put them on a CD. This is well worth the extra cost, and it's certainly something that I recommend. Use them wisely. A good shot can be used in many unexpected ways. I've used otherwise useless pictures of landscapes and discolored water scenes as backgrounds for some great custom work. Starfields from the public domain can also make great backgrounds and accent images. Photos that you might not have any use for on your website may work great on letterhead or envelopes to help set a mood or convey a feeling. Start really looking at postcards, screensavers, and other images around you, and you just might be surprised at how ordinary scenes, taken out of context or shot from an unusual angle, can create a certain mood. A smart businessman takes advantage of this fact once he realizes it, and we know that you're smart since you're here with us in this ebook. But keep in mind that you can never use any image that you don't have full rights to use. Lifting an image that you think is public domain or one that's freely available could still lead to legal difficulties down the road and even a lawsuit. So, if necessary, hire out a recreation and then copyright it yourself. While that brings additional cost, it will help you avoid such problems and will also make your site unique. Copyright Details Confusion seems to be the rule whenever you talk about copyright issues. But the simple fact is this. Put all of your images and documents from your website, or anything you want to copyright for that matter, onto a CD, include a small fee, and ship it to the Copyright Office of the United States Government, and you'll have the copyright. Their website, by the way, is uspto.gov. The procedure is simple enough, and fees can be as little as 35 bucks. so taking the time to ensure that your images are protected is certainly well worth the time and effort. And there's even a phone number that you can call for information and assistance. It's area code 202-707-3000. Some details on what copyright terms are and what is and what is not considered public domain can be found at the USPTO website. The USPTO website will certainly give you all of the history and details on copyright issues. But here's what you really need to know. The current comprehensive copyright laws took effect in 1978. They include publishing, distribution, and photocopying any copyrighted work without the creator's permission or license as a legal offense. Technically, the moment the shutter is pressed, provided the image being photographed is itself not protected by trademark or copyright, the photographer owns the copyright for that image. The only exception is employees where the company has a contract giving it rights to the work in question prior to the image itself being taken. Otherwise, a license or permission would still be required. You cannot copyright a concept or any work that has no artistic merit. It must be an original work of authorship. In other words, so for instance, you can't copyright a phone book or a list of names, but you might be able to copyright a list of names done in calligraphy. The reason behind the law was the copying machine itself. So registration of items for copyright was really set up with magazines in mind to prevent republication of stories and images from existing works. However, the reason to register your work is that without registration, the burden of proof and all legal costs fall upon you. But if you can prove that registration took place prior to the infringement, then you can be compensated both your legal fees and punitive damages up to $150,000 per image. Even though any work, whether labeled as such or not, is legally copyrighted from the moment it's created, for registration to have the full force of law, the work must be properly registered with the Copyright Office before the infringement takes place. So, sending in your registration via FedEx or registered receipt requested mail is a good idea simply because it provides stamp dates that can be used as proof if you ever need to go to court. The two ways to register are either as a collection of unpublished images or as published images. And the regulations for unpublished work, that means you register before you use it or sell a license to anyone else, are that it must 1. have the correctly completed application form, 2. include the $30 non-refundable filing fee for each application, 
and three, have a non-returnable deposit of the work to be registered. Now, you can put two or more photographs into a collection, provided that they are related in one of the following ways. They are assembled in an orderly form, or they all have a single title identifying the collection as a whole, such as web page images, 2007, 1 of 900, 2 of 900, etc., or all of the images are by the same artist or have been contributed by the artist. The actual regulation from the Copyright Office says this, published collections of photographs and all of the copyrightable elements of a unit of publication may be registered on a single form with a single fee if all of the photographs are owned by the same copyright claimant. Registration of a collection of photographs extends to each copyrightable element in the collection. There is no limit to the number of photographs that may be included in an unpublished collection. In the case of published work, two copies of the published work are required for deposit with the registration, not one. Also, published work must be registered within 90 days of publication. At this point, you probably wonder how anyone manages to get away with using clip art and other copyrighted images on their sites without fear of amazing fines and the law coming down on them. But you have to realize that many otherwise illegal infringements of copyright are covered under the law of fair use, which gives certain groups access to news and educational information even if it's copyrighted. And parody also falls under the fair use doctrine. So as long as you're using the look and feel for the purpose of satire, you are protected, and of course the government can do whatever it likes. A recent update to the copyright law, called the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, protects web hosts and providers from being sued if their clients infringe on copyrights, but the providers must remove the pages in question to remain immune from prosecution. Now all of this should make it clear why you want to use your own images, or ones that you've licensed legally on your letterhead, your web pages, and your advertisements. And for the images that you create on your own, registering could allow you to pursue litigation against someone who violates your rights. After all, the potential for a, say, a $100,000 payday for someone stealing an image from your site, that's certainly worth the $30 registration fee all by itself. Image Resolution The images on your page need to be crisp and unique. Paying to have them made for you and then registering them is a good idea. But more than that, they need to be stored on the page at a size that looks good and downloads fast. Minimizing any unnecessary elements like background music and speech or anything else that will slow down performance and annoy your customers is also very important. Finally, it's good to keep a clean, consistent look and feel to the entire site, including throughout all subpages and, when possible, on target landing pages as well. The most powerful tool in your arsenal of image is your web page. A professional, quick-loading page speaks volumes of the trustworthiness of your company. Flashy entries and shockwave extravaganzas that visitors must suffer through on each visit or bypass to get to the heart of the site tell them that you're more concerned with showing off what you can do than showing them what you have to offer. So lead with the good stuff. Find out what your customers want, then give it to them. That, my friend, is the key to business success, no matter what your market is. Finding a need and fulfilling that need at a price the customer can afford that still provides you with a profit. Building your site, one, two, three. When it comes time to actually build your site, you'll likely feel overwhelmed because of the sheer number of choices to be made. Do you set up your own server with a static IP address? Or do you have someone else host the site for you? Or do you use some combination of the two? Which software package do you use to create and maintain the page? What images and forms or tables do you need? And how and from what will you generate them? Luckily, the 8 days to cash method, using ClickBank to get you started, will make most of this surprisingly simple. The vast majority of the images and legwork needed will actually come from the landing pages of the products that you'll sell and link to, and packages like SiteSales SBI can take almost all of the worry and work right out of the equation if you just want to dive in and expand later. The very first thing to do is decide if you would rather buy a domain name and then pay to have it hosted for you, or get a domain and host it yourself on your own dedicated server, or go with a turnkey service like SBI to simply start making money. Remember, if you choose the first option, many hosting service sites offer a free first site portal page off of your domain registrar, 
and on that you can build a website which will more than meet the needs of getting a ClickBank site up and running. So if you decide that you'll have to hire work done, or even if you plan to do most or all of it yourself, some questions that are good to think of before you begin designing include these. What products are you selling? How many hits per month do you expect? How many and what types of files will you be storing on your site? Will you be handling live ordering or just redirecting? And finally, if you are going to handle live orders, what types of payments are accepted? If you've already laid out your business plan, then the answers to these questions are easy to figure. These give you enough detail to begin conceptualizing what your website layout and structure needs are going to be. You might even take a pen and paper, draw out some plans, decide what images and forms need to be created. Then you can determine whether or not you're going to need professional help in creating any parts of your page before you actually get started. And if you find that you do need help, the good news is that today, finding a freelancer is easier than at any other time in history. With the rise of sites like ifreelance.com and other online service sites, you can bid for and hire a professional to handle all or part of your task quickly and easily. Here's a list of important details that any pro you want to hire is going to need to know before starting work. And by the way, if your contract worker doesn't ask any of these, that's probably a reason to be suspicious of them. What's your goal for the site? How are you handling sales and payments? What vendor or system do you plan to use? What's your budget for both initial design and maintenance and updating? What are your expectations for maintenance? Where will artwork and materials for the site come from? And who owns the copyrights to all of those materials? And what are competitor sites doing that you like or dislike? Anytime you plan to hire someone, you need to first check out references, and in the case of artists or web designers, check out their portfolio of past work and websites. And if you do speak with previous clients, ask these questions. How timely is the provider in responding to contact? Are they open to criticism and feedback? How do they do with maintenance and follow-up? And did they meet the quoted price and time frame? Once you're satisfied, get a written, signed contract. Receiving this by fax is okay as well. Include timelines for milestones and completion, and a clear list of who's responsible for what and when. Include penalties and bonuses for late or early work, and be sure to stipulate exactly how and when updates will be contracted in the future. To help you out with the timeline and ensure that you're prepared, let's do a little step-by-step -step as a guide that you can use during your own website creation process. Step 1. Lay out a business plan detailing your goals, for instance selling ClickBank's ebooks to clients, what types of ebooks, how to target and advertise, etc. to get an idea of the type of page and domain name and links that you'll want to have in place. Step 2. Create a complete website design on paper, including sketches of images and layouts. Step 3. Make a list of each unique item or image that needs to be created, and then decide whether A. You can create them, or B. You need to hire that work done. Step 4. If you need to hire work done, you need to compile into lists all of the items you need based on their type, for instance, a list for images a list for forms, one for any database or advanced features, so that you can get bids and prepare licensing for their creation prior to completing the site. Step 5. Get bids and completion estimates for any work that needs to be done and for hosting. Add this information into your business plan and then adjust anything that you had miscalculated. Step 6. Working with your designers and the host you've selected, decide what software you're going to use to create the page and then purchase it. Bear in mind that a used or outdated copy is generally a good bargain in most cases, and any backup or utility programs you're going to need. Step number seven, create and compile all of the elements into a web page that works locally or on a test server to make sure that your concept works. Step eight, visit the web page with several different browsers in all possible display settings to make sure of compatibility and to allow you to address any layout problems. Step number nine, once everything checks out, publish to the web and confirm that the site is active. Step 10, list your site with all of the necessary search engines to begin getting public notice. 
And finally, step 11, promote and advertise as per your business plan. Secrets to creating a great site. There are so-called secrets to successful sites, but they really aren't all that secret. They're just not popular with most web designers and unresearched by would-be Michelangelos who get carried away with the power that their site is unleashed in their hands. A few of the top points and secrets that you should consider are these. First, the site needs to look good, not necessarily great, but not messy or chaotic, and certainly not too busy or cluttered. Try to use black text on white backgrounds when you can. Use click here for labels and remove any distracting elements. Keep it simple. Second, make your content valuable and easy to access. Third, be sure your site downloads as quickly as it can. Help this along by A, using the absolute minimum number of images necessary, B, being certain that all images are not larger in dots per inch or physical size than they absolutely must be, C, creating separate pages for each clearly separate bit of content, D, using as little web code as possible, and E, test your download speeds using your website creation program's download test features. If you don't have such a tool, then visit a site like netmechanic.com. Fourth, have built-in structured methods to update and change the information that you offer. A way to accomplish this might be to A, have some forum or other interactive user discussion group as a free offering associated with the site. This keeps people coming back and checking your page even after they visit the first time. B, Maintain a blog on the page so that it gets updated, preferably daily, and causes people to come back to see the new content. And C, you can hold contests and give away freebies at regular intervals, encouraging people to sign up and come back to see who won, what the next prize will be, and so forth. Number five, keep people involved. Be interactive. Six, be certain your search engine layout and keywords are search engine friendly. Incidentally, there are tons of documents on the internet and how-to pages that tell you the secrets of this, and we'll cover the basics a little later on here as well. Seventh, make it easy to navigate. Every page must have an easily discoverable way to, one, go back one page, and two, go back home. Not everyone knows the backspace key and refreshing will do that, and they just might leave rather than bother trying to figure it out. Number eight, sell your site. Get links out there to other sites ASAP. Write articles and put them on your site. Advertise your website on business cards, billboards, in pay-per-click programs like AdWords, or even start an email newsletter. And finally, number nine, use only the technology you need. Avoid flash, avoid frames, minimize any animations or the need to download any additional software or plugins. Don't use pop-ups and don't try to bypass common security settings. If you do, most people will simply surf away. Promoting your site. At this point, you're ready to make your site visible to the huge multitude of folks out there who want to spend their cash, and some of which you're probably willing to take. Now, the act of letting them know your site exists is called promoting your site, and while there are entire disciplines dedicated to just how to do that, there are a few simple and easy to use tricks that you can include, such as maintaining a good title site and using appropriate keywords so that search engines can find you easily, that we'll touch on here. First, you must use keywords that you want to have identified with your company, both on your home page and in the meta tag of the web page. If you hire the web page created, be sure to supply your web page creator a list of keywords you want to have appear, since some search engines include these descriptions just beneath your link. You need to keep the description to 254 or less characters, of which typically only the first 55 to 60 will actually show in the search engine. Along with that, here are some other tips that you can use, but they're not commonly known. Use header tags of the H1, H2, and H3 variety or any keywords on your pages to make certain they are flagged by search engines. Place keywords within the first couple of paragraphs of each page when you can. Try to use keywords inside of hyperlinks that go to other pages or sites. Avoid frames or complicated navigation systems. Keep it simple for the search engine to index. By the way, if you find your site doesn't index correctly, submit a Google sitemap request to google.com slash webmasters slash sitemaps slash login or use Greg Terrence's Google sitemap generator and editor at sitemapdoc.com. Attempt to align your pages 
around specific keywords. Submit your web page to every search engine you can find for addition to their database. And although you'll see many people who are willing to do this for you for money, no one will do it as well as you can do it yourself for free. In addition, many sites can be found simply by searching for Add Your URL, including Google, Yahoo, MSN, AOL Search, and Ask.com. Use software and books to ensure that you've optimized your search capability for search engines. Check your ranking and compare your site to others using web position at wilsonweb.com slash afd slash webposition.htm and also see Dr. Wilson's plain spoken guide to search engine optimization at wilsonweb.com slash ebook slash seo.htm. Advertise. Make certain that your URL is on any headers, business cards, and in any telephone and yellow page ads that you run. Arrange for links to and from related sites. Consider programs like Google's AdSense that place your ads for a fee per click on search engine queries. And finally, submit your site to directories like the Open Directory Project. You'll find that one at dmoz.com. Yahoo provides the Yahoo directory, docs.yahoo.com, but bear in mind that Yahoo will charge you $299 a year. A few other directories exist at about.com and also business.com. Link exchanges. Another good practice is to involve yourself in a link exchange program. You put a link to another site in exchange for that site having a link to your site. That makes it convenient for visitors of sites that complement each other to easily locate other sites of interest, and it gets your name out there to be seen as well. So, let's say that you sell luggage, and you know of another company that sells travel clothing. It would make sense for both of you to reciprocate links. You can even automate the process with software. Get a hold of Evoy's Site Sell Value Exchange at sales.sitesell.com or try automated link building programs like Zeus at cyber-robotics.com. How to make search engines work for you. First, Use the meta tags in your title page and the heading styles H1, H2, and H3 on any keywords that you want to have trigger a search. Now you can also organize pages to have an effect on how well your site will utilize existing search engine algorithms. How to optimize your site. A whole industry exists called the Search Engine Optimization or SEO companies. They get money from people who need help getting their sites ranked higher. They can't really promise any such thing, though, and recent illegal and false claims to the contrary have led to legal issues and a bad name on the entire industry, even though the service actually is of some value. Now, a good rule of thumb is just not to respond to anyone who solicits you and then promises they'll get you a higher ranking. Remember, just like the saying promises, there's no such thing as a free lunch. And if it sounds too good to be true, well, you know that it probably is. If you ever do find yourself having problems with an unethical SEO, well, report them to the FTC, that's the Federal Trade Commission. Find them at FTC.gov, or you can use the phone at 877-FTC-HELP. And if the company's based in a foreign country, visit eConsumer.gov. ClickBank Tools and Reports The secret to the 8 Days to Cash on the Internet program is this. An entire world's worth of information, software, and ebooks, and a tried and true payment system that you don't even have to pay for is already in place. All you need to do to cash in is have a website with traffic and provide links to landing sites for related goods from the thousands that already exist on ClickBank. So whether you go whole hog and decide to create an incorporation, and expand to direct sales or even creation and marketing of your own products someday. Or you just open a simple registrar or SBI-based site with links to ClickBank landing sites. You can start making money, as little or as much money as you want, in days. Or, really, possibly, even within hours. One thing that will help you is an understanding of ClickBank. And you need to know how to find products that fit into the niche that you've decided to fill. So let's say, for instance, that you have a great site on geocaching and you have hundreds of visitors each day. Now, using a site like that to promote business and how-to books, well, it wouldn't go over very well. But let's say that you instead have links to camping products, hiking stuff, and guides to off-the-beat locations. Now, that is something that your audience would leap at. So how do you locate the products that you know your visitors would be willing to buy in the vast ClickBank storehouse? Let's go over again 
how you become a ClickBank vendor. And then we'll look at some ClickBank tools that you just might want to take advantage of. Signing up as a ClickBank affiliate is very simple. Just visit ClickBank.com and click the Sell Products link. Then on the menu on the next page, click the Sign Up option. Then simply fill out and submit the form. The information they want is basically the stuff they need so that they can send your checks to you, your name, your address, and your contact information. Finding Gold with Advanced ClickBank Searches Most of the time, you'll simply use the search engine to access the ClickBank Marketplace and find products, software, ebooks, and so forth that are relevant to your company. But you can download the Marketplace directly and then use your own software or even your web browser, although that's not really optimal to do it that way, to view and search the titles directly. Download the zip file from clickbank.com slash feeds slash marketplace underscore feed underscore b and then the number one dot xml dot zip. The marketplace is updated daily at 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. So new entries are always coming in. Checking back or setting up a daily parsing for new offerings is generally a good idea. But if you do download the Marketplace, any program that reads XML, and that includes Microsoft Word, should be able to open it just fine. But don't be surprised if you experience a long delay when you try to do that. Your computer might seem to hang for up to several minutes even. Just be patient or use a program that parses XML data in segments. Be imaginative in your searches. For instance, there is little that shows up for camping, but there are software programs for campgrounds. Using variations of words and near searches can provide you with hits that otherwise simply would not show.